Hey Halloween folks, what you just watched was our Halloween 1R POV short movie chase. Basically, a damsel in distress, me, being chased by an ill-willed protagonist, which actually was just me and my colleague wearing a cheap mask and a black hoodie. But anyway, today I'm gonna show you the kind of making of and behind the scenes of how we created that sequence and hopefully it gives you some insight into how you could make something like that on your own or at the very least, get you in the Halloween spirit. Why did we pack a whole lot of POV action into this Halloween episode. So here's a little POV explainer. POV, or point of view, sometimes referred to as SPV, first person view, is a really popular shooting technique used in horror movies that allows you to get in on the action, experiencing the first-hand perspective of the character, me in this instance. Of course, blockbuster movies use cinema cameras, but this Halloween, the best option for POV shooting for Joe Bloggs, like you and me, the Insta360 ONE R, more specifically the 360 mod. Why? Well, top reasons. Number one, insane flexibility and SOV options. I mean, don't get me wrong, there's a time and a place for different types of lenses. But if you film with a regular wide angle, especially for POV, there's going to be a high likelihood that you're going to miss the mark when it comes to framing. Either it's too high or too low, no hands, too much hands, or it's crooked. But with 360, you control the perspective with reframing so you get a desired result at your own expense. And number two is stabilization. This was essential specifically for this sequence because the whole thing is literally a chase. So we're like running most of the time. So we needed the best stabilization possible. The kind of mount you use will also influence the results of stabilization, but we'll get to that when we talk through the behind the scenes. Speaking of which, it is about time. But before we begin, I acknowledge my choice of shoes for being chased by a villain was slightly unpractical at very best. But I guess you never know when you're gonna be in such haunting events, right? Anyway, here's the scene by scene breakdown of our Insta360 Halloween special. Step one, creepy abandoned location with almost zero people. Check. First up, establishing scene. For the establishing scene, we couldn't do a horror theme without a super wide high angle, like we did in last year's episode. We used the extended selfie stick to accentuate the feeling of the character being totally alone, seemingly so small and amongst the deadly silence. Looks quite like a drone, right? I'm happy with this one. We introduced the POV angle early in the sequence so the viewer can experience the journey firsthand. Here we integrated some DSLR footage to complement the 1R angles because one kind of disadvantage of super wide fish eye lens is that people or objects in the distance can appear really small. Dolly zooms are commonly used in horror movies and with the 1R it's super easy to capture. Simply walk away from your subject with your selfie sticks, in this case starting closely to their face. You can create this effect really easily by just using keyframes and adjusting the field of view at different points. So we went back to the POV angle to kickstart the chase and here we use the chest mount because we wanted the hands to be mostly in the center of the frame to create a realistic running first person perspective. The low angle running enhances the feeling of being chased but the cool part no extra hands needed, no sweaty cameraman trying to keep up. We just had to run at our own pace while holding the selfie stick really close to our feet. This next one was a spur of the moment idea when our original plan failed miserably. 360 cam, an extended selfie stick on a tripod, a filter, and hey presto, you've got a makeshift CCTV camera. The chase accelerates onto the next shot. So this scene included running from a black hallway to a pretty bright, large space. The severe contrast between the two places meant that we had to manually adjust the exposure to avoid the areas of sunlight from being super blown out. With these settings, we managed to get some nice motion blur, creating a sense of rush and panic, complemented by the heavy music. To escape to the rooftop, I had to climb some pretty clunky ladders and with the chest mount, the camera was too close, which kind of affected the stitching line. But with the head mount, this avoided this problem and produced a good view of my hands as I was mostly looking up in this shot anyway. 
So we returned to the DSLR for this shot. Essentially, a DSLR was used here for better cropping options and kept the rest of the rooftop hidden. Head strap on here, I got on my knees and held onto the highest part of the rooftop to kind of fake the view of dangling to reveal the stalker in the final frame with a lot of cropping to try and conceal our faked rooftop fall. Okay, definitely not the most convincing, but we tried. And that is the end of our sequence. And you might be thinking, what happened next? Dun, 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 put some sound effects in there. We got escorted from the rooftop and back to our desks. So that is Halloween 2020 done and dusted. That was fun, but you know what's gonna be even more fun? Well, you're gonna need to make sure you subscribe so you don't miss our massive announcement tomorrow. And whilst you're down there in that region, please consider giving this video a little like, please. And thank you. And happy Halloween when it comes. And chase adventure, and I'll see you next week. Whew.